I bet many of you do as well. Uh, this session will go over Richard's journey to hack the Quincy drawing bot. Uh, he wanted to hack this robot to draw Pokemons uh, for his son, and uh, that's sort of the root of this. And he has promised that at the end of this session, you can win uh, one of these Quincy robots. So we'll have, uh, we'll have a section, we'll, we might have a, a truncated Q&A to make sure we can have that session uh, to, um, so you can win, win one of these. So uh, thank you very much for coming, and uh, enjoy. Richard. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, I, I will be uh, 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 raffling off, too. Um, and you need your phone for that. So I hope everyone has a phone. Um, so you should be good for that. Uh, but yeah, good afternoon. Thanks for, for visiting this talk. Uh, my name is uh, Richard, AKA D Any Key. That's my, my nickname. And I, I guess I am one of those, like many of here, um, self proclaimed uh, amateur hackers, coders, makers. Uh, I, I, I do many things. I actually make lots of projects. Um, on the background, actually, if you can see what it is, it's one of the projects I made many years ago. Um, it was a, a 3D scanner based on a lot of Raspberry Pis, uh, 100 Raspberry Pis uh, joined up in one network because I wanted to have a 3D scan of my son. So my son often is the, the driving factor in my life. Uh, having children, I think, is really very uh, insightful in the things you want to do in life. Um, and I, I wanted to have a scan of him. And unfortunately, my son literally cannot stand still. Um, not even one second. So all the regular scanning methods, like a Kinect scanner and those kinds of things, were impossible. So when the Raspberry Pi camera came out, literally at that time, I thought, oh, let's just buy some of them. I started with 20 and got too many more. Uh, and I can now make 3D scans of my uh, son. Um, this project and many of my other projects are actually um, uh, officially uh, released. Uh, they're available for you to see and watch. Uh, I have uh, a page on instructables.com where you find most of my hardware projects uh, that, that I make. Uh, and anything that I typically do with code, um, I also tend to directly put it on GitHub and, and share. And I'll come back to that, actually, why I'm doing that. Because I actually don't do that just so I give other people benefit. But actually, I get a lot of benefit out of it myself. Um, and that's why I, I'll come to that in the end. I think really it's really important when you share things to do. So but this particular project, um, came about that I came about this lovely little Quincy drawing robot. Um, at that time, this thing was dead cheap. It was tw I bought it for 29 euros. Um, and I don't know how you can make a uh, three-axis or two-and-a-half semi-axis uh, robot with an arm processor in it, stepper motors in it, a camera in it, a battery in it for 29 euros. But I guess you can. Um, so I actually bought a few. Um, to start tinkering around with it and, and, and those kinds of things. Now, I did put an asterisk with it because, of course, nowadays, due to the shortage of electronics, the prices have gone up. So if you start Googling around on uh, an Amazon, or you can still buy them. Uh, they're still on AliExpress. That's where I uh, uh, bought a few of them as well. Uh, but the, the price, unfortunately, has gone up a little bit. Um, and what can this drawing robot do is it can actually um, not just draw, it can actually teach people, children, or whoever, how to draw. So it comes with all these cards of things you want to learn, a dog, a cat, a fox, a squirrel, or whatever. Uh, and it will take step by step, um, uh, uh, show you how to draw it, and you take each step and you try to uh, copy and, and mimic that. Um, and it works in a simple concept. You show it a card. There's a, a camera inside the, uh, the robot. I fear if it was uh, maybe uh, NFC or something, but no, it's a simple camera. Uh, and actually, on the back of the card um, is, a, is a QR code that it scans, and therefore it knows what instructions it should uh, follow. So I did this, of course, with my kit. Um, we, we presented it with a card. Um, and as you see, the robot draws it actually in front of, so facing the right direction for the kit, so every step it does. And in this case, we showed it a, uh, I should make you guess actually what it is, but anyone know, sees what this is? It's a squirrel. Um, or when my son drew it, I'm not sure if it's really a squirrel or something like that. But um, so we, we, we did the squirrel thing, and we did the dog and the fox thing, I think. But then, of course, my son came. Daddy, great, but I'm not really a squirrel fan. I am a 
Pikachu fan, um, can you make it please? Draw Pikachu. Uh, I'm like, uh, okay, <laughs> we can at least investigate this, uh, this opportunity, this possibility. So I, I did open up the box, um, found out what's inside of it. This is the motherboard of the, of the robot. It actually has an ARM processor, uh, a very well documented ARM processor, by the way. You'll find this processor on many uh, small embedded um, uh, chips and devices that are out there. So it, uh, documentation is widely available. And actually, one thing that you also see actually very nicely is there some pin headers here are, um, on the left side. And I'm pretty sure I didn't do the trace yet because I actually didn't go down that route. But I'm pretty sure that's the interface to directly overwrite the firmware and write your own firmware and that kind of stuff. So actually, I'm quite surprised how easily accessible um, they, they made this thing. But I, wanted, I didn't want to go down the hardware route. I wanted to just see if I can actually um, leverage the existing software that was inside of it to see if we could make it do thing, other things. And I said, how does the thing work? Um, it takes a QR code. Um, and it does something. So I'll, I just started to reverse engineer from how, how does that work. So if you take the QR code and you scan that, you see that there's some code pops up. In this case, this is a card of a dog. And it always starts with exclamation mark A. I assume the A stands for action or something like that. No clue. Uh, then a dog, zero, zero, zero. Now, in the back of the unit is actually an SD card slot reader. Um, so there's a micro SD card in there. Um, and actually, if you put that SD card in your computer, it's a just normal, in English, God bless, um, uh, file system, um, because a lot of things in China are not always makes it a lot harder troubleshooting. But it was actually, everything was super nice, nice in English. And as you can see, there's a direct relationship between what you scan and it goes to a certain directory. Now, if you then go um, inside the directory, uh, you'll find some files and some of the things very clearly made sense already. Uh, .snd, well, I guess that's the sound file, the, the, the things it talks. And if you did analyze that, that's a, just a raw uh, a web file. So that's actually easy to use and create, and uh, lots of tools available for that. Uh, and then there's this magic secretive PMD file and an IAS file. And the PMD files, there are many of them. And there was always, per directory, there is this one um, IAS file. And this one I was able to open up. And again, looked very simple, realistic, um, didn't need no actual documentation. I think I could figure this out because I knew when I showed a car to that thing what it does. It starts talking, it starts giving instructions, and then it starts doing certain drawing things that I have to redraw. And at the end, actually, like if this is a, what is it, this is a dog, at the end, actually, you have to um, uh, write down dog, and you have to put the, the show the cards, D-O-G, to the machine. And that's actually the, the last three steps that you see here. So that's the difference between a P and a C with C. I guess capture or something like that. You actually have to show it the D so it knows that you showed the D and said, oh, great, you did the, the D thing. Um, so but this was easy to think. I can, I can write this, not too complicated. But yeah, how to do I draw? That's clearly in that uh, PMD file thing. Now, of course, we can look inside that PMD file. Unfortunately, that's where the journey of easiness stopped. Um, yeah, this was just abracadabra, whatever stuff. It definitely wasn't, it, it wasn't JSON or human readable or, or whatever stuff. Um, now, first thing I do, uh, many people should learn that. If you don't know something, you just Google it instead of asking someone else. Um, so I, of course, go to Google and say, hey, what's a PMD file format? And um, I actually think it's a, uh, uh, so Google will tell you that it is some page maker, whatever, out of 1980s or something like that. But unfortunately, Google is, in this case, wrong. Uh, because while that did exist and had the same name, it's not the same file fo uh, format. So here, I really had to start figuring out, so how do you take a file of data and, and try to figure out what it, what it entails and that kind of stuff? Um, now, one thing I was sure of, that it contains data on how to draw something. Um, I assume numbers something with numbers uh, or something like that. So what I did is I wrote a very simple program, and that would just take every single byte or a few bytes, combination of bytes, to form a number and, 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 and show me what the picture comes out of that. Um, you think, yeah, well, simple. So my first attempt resulted to this. Um, yeah, it did, 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 didn't give me the dog that I was looking for or something like that. So, um, and even though I've been programming for quite a while, and normally when you program and, and you work with integers or floats and the different types of number systems, you never hardcore actually know on how it actually is being stored in a file. At least I never did. Um, so I had to do some research on that. And I found out there are actually many ways on how you can write a number into a file. Uh, so of course you have two byte numbers, you have four bytes, so how many bytes you use to create the number. 
Uh, you have something called little Indians and big Indians, depending on if it writes from the right to the left or the left to the right uh, of numbers. Um, so, well, instead of me trying to guess all this out, I just started randomly guessing uh, and throwing that to my program and see um, what came out of that. And at some point, um, this came out. And still doesn't look like a dog. <laughs> uh, but I guess there was something with these numbers. Uh, it, 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 it can't be artificial talent or something like that. I was, I think, on, 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 a, on a relatively good uh, way. So I did a lot of more troubleshooting. And actually, uh, I use a, a hex editor to figure it out because the, the main thing that I was struggling with is that um, so the numbers are four bytes, but my file size divided by four was not a whole number. Um, I'm like, oh, how is that possible? Uh, and then I figured out well, each file starts always with the same byte. So there is actually the first byte of each file is just an identification that, hey, I am this PMD file, whatever thing. Did more and more troubleshooting, and then I found out actually the second byte tells me how many segments are in the file of the steps of what it has to draw. Um, and then per file, it had another byte that says how many coordinates or numbers at least there were. And so that I figured out. Wasn't sure yet how to draw it and all that kind of stuff, but what I did do is already directly document this on GitHub. Now, I'm pretty sure this thing is not very popular in the world. I don't know how many thing, people have one of these things, so. I didn't thought that this would reach a million people audience or anything like that, but for me it's easy just to document, also for myself always a great place to find my information back if I stop a project and later on move on. And so I wrote down what I found, so wrote down how I think the, the file format uh, is on, uh, and I went on with my journey. I tried to start figuring out how can I take these numbers and how does that machine turn that into an actual drawing action. And I was getting closer and closer, but I was really struggling because and what you see here is, uh, so in the set of cards, there is a, um, um, a card for a circle and a, and a card for a square. So I took some of these code snippets and I just put them into one file. So it would draw um, two squares and a circle for me to like calibrate. So I can also figure out what the numbers will be like, at least what I should be expecting and that kind of stuff. But every time my software was drawing the data from that, well, I got something that looked like it. But, but wasn't the same. Um, this really baffled me. This was really um, uh, things. But that's the nice thing about sharing. Without me asking, suddenly I get this email from some random guy in Canada saying, hey, I saw your GitHub page. Um, I was thinking about one of these robots. Um, I, I like to see if I can help and that kind of stuff. And he was already writing code as well. He didn't even have the robot yet, and he was already writing code for it, which was amazing. He did order it, but it took a long time for him to get from AliExpress. And he was also getting the same strange behavior. He was doing random coordinates things, and instead of getting a square, he was getting this kind of, you know, I don't know, fish-shaped uh, thing or something like that. And then I started thinking, or we started actually thinking, is like, I've always been thinking about coordinates, x, y. Uh, that must be in the file. But if you see how the robot works, the robot has two arms. And it literally is like, like me as a human being, the arms are not on the same beginning point. There's one on the left and one on the right. And um, what this entails in is this concept here. So you have the arms, the shoulder joints at the top. There's two and a half centimeters in between. Uh, there's an 11 centimeters for the upper arm, 10 centimeters for the, the underarm, and that's where it comes together. So I was thinking maybe these numbers were not x, y, but there were angles of, of these two shoulders. Now that sounded very plausible, but then the real challenge started. So I don't know who's here good at math, but that's mathematically quite difficult, at least. Uh, my math skills definitely stopped there. Uh, how do I calculate if I knew what those two angles were? Having two and a half centimeters apart from each other, they're joined together. If I move this angle here, where what is in the end the x, y coordinate of that endpoint over there? Now, I teach Coder Dojo programming lessons every Saturday, and one of my fellow Coder Dojo um, colleagues um, is actually a math rock star. So he drew these up for me on a piece of paper. And I'm like, dude, well, thank you very much for your effort, but uh, how do I translate that into code? Um, and he was also, so he, he somewhat thinks he figured it out, but he was really also struggling, but the original point is not 
0 comma 0, there's one on the left and one is on the right, and how do you put that in math and, and how to work that out and that kind of stuff. So I'm like, ah, I was working on this and I trying, trying to learn myself math. Now that's not an easy thing on my age. So I really started to give up. I'm like, this, this is not going to work. I need, I, need, I need some serious help here. Um, and then I actually did something that I do for lots of other more typically graphical things. Let's see if I can actually hire cheap help to, to, to sponsor me with this, to, f to figure this out. So I actually went to Fiverr. I don't know if you know Fiverr. The name stands for five. Normally you pay five dollars for someone to do something for you. It's in reality not always five dollars. Uh, um, but I just posted the thing there. Hey, I have this, I think, super uh, difficult math problem <laughs> uh, with a drawing on it, uh, literally that drawing. Uh, these are the stuff. Who can help me write the math? so I can actually understand angles towards uh, coordinates, because that's really what I was after for. And uh, some really nice guy, I think from Australia, said, yeah, for 12 euros, I'll, I'll do that for you. Well, said, uh, I don't have to do my own. Uh, I don't know if this is cheating with hacking, but uh, if someone is willing to give me this math stuff for 12 euros, go for it. And the guy actually spent two, three days on it. We had a long conversation. I was Every time he came back with his math thing, I was trying it out and the picture didn't really fit. But we sorted it out uh, in a couple of days. And uh, we really got some really, um, it was very clean code on how to actually get from angles to x, y uh, location. And also the other way around um, uh, from x, y um, to, to angles, because that's in the end actually what I wanted. Eh? If I want to make a drawing, I can take any JPEG, and then I want to say, well, I, I, on x, y, I want the thing to go down. But what, what angles does that represent? Now, unfortunately, that way back, reverse, is not one-way street. Eh? If you imagine, I can move my arms in multiple ways while the point still stays at the same thing. So I just brute force that. I just figure out on all dots what the angle should be, had a map for that, and, and, and figure that out. So I actually wrote a piece of software then to take an image. I could draw a line over the image, in my case Pikachu, of course, and started writing the, the steps down. But again, uh, my newborn friend from Canada who was working with me on this project as well. I wrote my program in, uh, in, in a .NET Windows program. Uh, he did a much better job. Uh, he mo wrote something web-based. Um, and uh, we have now a Quincy online editor where you can go online and you can upload an image and you can make this, you have to trace it. So, because you, you can't auto trace. Well, technically, of course, you could. But what you want is you want it to say, okay, this is step one. This, if you want it to also be an educational tool on how to draw and that kind of stuff. But for me, that wasn't the quest. For me, it was just about getting my kid to be happy. So, start in May, this is in November. Um, I showed him the robot, we tossed it a different card, and uh, magically, as what he asked, took a few months, lots of complicated math, uh, but it did drew Pikachu, uh, what he really wanted. And of course, kids, they like, well, oh, fantastic. Um, he was very happy. I did it in the end um, for his smile. See, that, that's what, as a dad, what, what you do it for. The kid is happy. He doesn't appreciate really how difficult it was or whatsoever. He moved on to the next project. He didn't care anymore whatsoever because it was six months later or something like that. Um, but for me, it was a fun journey. I, I, I met new people. I did learn a little bit about math, a little bit more. Um, uh, and it was really, really, really nice. And that's why we really want to share this with you, right? I mean, it's not about you having to hack this robot. If you do things and that kind of stuff, one thing I really recommend is always when you do projects, share. On all my projects, I've always gotten so much nice feedback, but also interaction on other people's ideas, and it really evolved the project and that kind of stuff. So use an instructable.com, use a GitHub, use a, a Thingiverse, um, whatever stuff. You find lots of things that I design on Thingiverse as well. Um, and I always get a lot of feedback from that as well. So it's very valuable to share things. And, yeah, when things do get hard, uh, don't cheat, uh, don't bill out, just go cheat and get help. And if you have to pay 12 euros for it, go pay 12 euros for it, I guess. Uh, it, it helped me move on my, uh, my project. So that was my experience about this uh, thing. And of course, I wanted to give you guys a chance to, to win one of these uh, things, or two, I actually have two. So we're going to do, if the screen uh, works, I guess we have to cancel out of this. There we go. We're going to do a little Kahoot. 
three questions, so it's going to be short. So I don't know if you all know Kahoot. You go on your phone, you go to kahoot.it, if you happen to have the app. Um, you don't have to t tell your real name. You can be any name, as long as you later can show me that you're you, that, you that person if you win. Type in the code. Uh, we do three questions, and the top two uh, will automatically get, um, will, will, you, will automatically, you can come pick up your Quincy drawing robot. Let's see. I hope you all have good connectivity. Everyone in? 21? Almost? Good to go? No, almost? Oh, uh, hints. The questions are, of course, about robots. So, don't know how much you know about robots. <laughs> good to go? No? Slow phone? Yes, good to go? Okie doke, there we go. So, uh, it is about, so three questions. Uh, you get points for scoring the right answer, but you get even more points for scoring faster the right answer. So, don't want to rush you, because the wrong answer doesn't give you points, but there we go. Um, da -da -da -da. So first question, you answer it on your phone. Where was the word robot first used? Was that in an ancient manuscript, in a play, in a science research paper, or in a news article? Where was the word robot first used? I think it was somewhere in the 1928 time frame. Something like that. It, it was, uh, yeah, it's not really, it was, uh, Slavic or something, it's, it's not a country, it's a dialect, but in Russia area. Uh, and it was in a, a play, in a play about human slavery um, uh, to, to mechanics or something like that. Uh, okay, so you still have a chance, don't worry, two other questions coming. Um, number two, who wrote the famous robot law, right, from robots should obey, should not hurt human beings and should try to keep itself uh, alive. Is that Isaac uh, Asimov, is that Isaac Newton, uh, Hiroshia uh, Ishiguro, or Tom Baker? Wow, good guess everyone. <laughs> um, all the other ones do have something to do with robots, by the way. Uh, I'll let you figure that out. There you go. Let's see if there's... Well, still many people in the top, so final, final, final question. There we go. What is the name of the robot in the movie Short Circuit? Is that the T-100, the T-200, Johnny number three, or Johnny number five? Da, 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 da. Ooh. Oh, many people like Terminator, I guess. T-200 is a Terminator. They kill people. It's not a drawing robot or something. a funny robot. It is, of course, Johnny number five. So, we'll see number three, but unfortunately, number three, I only have two. So, sorry, number three. Uh, uh, number two and one will get uh, the robot. So, number two, Cressim, whoever Cressim is. There you go. And number one is Logan 1W. Who's that? Who's uh, Logan W? In the back, there you go. So, one for you. There you go. Congrats. And in the back, another robot expert. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, well, th thank you so much for, for them. Now, be because we had the giveaway, with, there's not much time for questions. We could maybe do one. Um, first, I uh, want to check Signal, it, who just won a prize. Um, is there a question? From, okay. Uh, so there's room for one question uh, from this microphone here, if anybody wants to ask. Or uh, you, can, you can talk to Richard right outside the tent uh, as soon as we wrap Absolutely. here. Absolutely. I'm so, doing a robot workshop tomorrow. If you want to learn yes. to program a robotic arm, you can come to my workshop. Yeah, so, so from building with popsicles to uh, tomorrow uh, working with robotic arms. There's a, there's a lot of, you can get a lot of skills from him.